Welcome to Marvel Source, I'm Bifna, and today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite Marvel comics to ever come out, and that is Deadpool Kills Marvel Universe. This is one of those issues where Deadpool goes around killing each and every one of the Marvel superheroes and villains. Why is he doing it? Could it be for revenge? Could it be mind control? We don't know. But really, this type of adaptation of Deadpool's story is very unique. Just having him see how he would interact with these type of heroes and villains, how he would take care of them, and ultimately how he comes out of this in the end. So we're going to find out through these pages of the comic what exactly happened. Enter Uatu, a watcher, one of the many beings that looks over the multiverse. You may have noticed a lot more of him recently in the What If shows that have been on Disney+, Plus, and that is exactly the same person here that's watching what's about to happen with Deadpool. I swear Uatu has some sort of eating disorder in this one because his neck is just super skinny compared to his head. Usually it's pretty proportional, but his head is always massive compared to the rest of his body. It's just a common trait for him. But he really gets dramatic too, where he just really feels the stories that go on in this universe. It starts off looking at the Fantastic Four's base. Sue Storm is holding Reed Richards. He's laying there. His elasticity is giving out, probably because of all that orange toxic fumes in the air that Deadpool released. He started with them first. Reed knows what's going on. He has that like, hey, you got to go save yourself. This is no time to be daddling with my dead body. You got to go fight this guy. As Sue sits with Reed as he's dying, we find out that Deadpool has stolen something. They don't tell us what, and Sue also notices that the smoke in the air is not toxic smoke. It's actually the thing ground up to a fine powder as he was a rock. And as Reed lays there, elastically dying, he's telling Sue that the kids that they had together were in the negative zone. They're safe. Deadpool can't get with them, but they can't get them back. The portal's been destroyed, and there's no way to get them. And then Reed Richards dies. There's a bang and Sue realizes that Johnny's nowhere to be found. She has to go find her brother. She has no idea where Deadpool is or what he's doing. So she has to go invisible, work her way through all the debris and safely get to the pod where her brother may be hiding. Now, Sue walks in on an explosion, which I can only describe as a spaceship crashing through the wall from what it looks like to me. Then you see Johnny crawling out of the fire. He doesn't get hurt because he's the human torch from the fire, but you see the cuts on him. So he's been fighting someone with a sword. That can only mean one person. Deadpool and this is the first time we see him show up in the comic for a few pages coming out with those quips that hot head and he goes in to kill Johnny Johnny put up a fight not good enough cuts him then you see the blood splatter on Sue this is what gives it away to Deadpool the fact that she's covered in blood she can now be seen and Deadpool does notice her with a little peekaboo and right away Deadpool's got that headache but what's that coming from you see that tear and it can only mean one thing now sue is unquestionably mad she's losing everyone she lost reed she lost the thing her kids are essentially gone she's not getting them back so pop pop deadpool's body's falling to the ground she feels relieved because who comes back from having their head blown up sue's breathing a sigh of relief from all the experiences she just went through but she hasn't experienced enough because Deadpool instantly comes back from the dead because why wouldn't he? He's pretty much immortal. Comes back, kills Sue, stabs her. She didn't see that coming for a second. We're back to Uatu telling us that the Fantastic Four are done. The first Marvel's to go from Deadpool's little tirade he's going on through this universe. And he's trying to get us back to where this all began. Trying to really set up this story at this Ravencroft Asylum where this apparently all started. And looking down these panels, you can see chat bubbles of people begging for their life in the background. We can assume those are other people that the doctor is either treating or testing something on, but they're all trapped in there, whether they're mutants or not, that's hard to say. And building up this mystery to find out who this doctor is and why he's involved in any way. The X-Men show up bringing Deadpool with them. At some point, they captured him. He's just still mouthing away like he does. And you can tell the yellow distinction of his bubbles puts him on a different level than the rest of the characters in any of the MCU. He has that yellow tinge while more of the mainstream ones have that white background where they're kind of involved in the universe. And that's just a weird signification that they always do with Deadpool where he has his different color chat bubbles. Xavier seems to trust his doctor enough to hand over Deadpool because Deadpool's a pretty dangerous guy. So if this guy can handle it, that would be 
ideal for the X-Men and their situation, but also I like seeing how Deadpool has these problems with institutions where he has several annulled marriages and he's overdrawn at the bank and apparently he burnt the Smithsonian to the ground. But this doctor hopefully can fix him. The doctor calls him Mr. Wilson, which obviously his name is Wade Wilson, and that is why he's called outside of Deadpool, if you didn't know his original identity is Wade Wilson. Also, he's going on about his fashion faux pas with this sleeve from the straight jacket, how they got him in there, I have no idea, but we start to notice this uh, third form of word box in the bottom corner commenting on Wade. It doesn't have the same text as other word boxes on the page, for example, when the doctor's talking, but it leads us to believe there's possibly a third party with the doctor finally leading into this therapy session he's trying to have with Deadpool, which is obviously frivolous. Deadpool's not the therapy type. And he sends the boys out. We're getting into it, the nitty gritty, but you start noticing this yellow square, which is signifying Deadpool's thoughts. That's what's going on in his head when it's a square, when it's a chat bubble, it's what's coming out of his mouth. But the yellow is when it's Deadpool referring to himself or him talking in general. And Deadpool's excited for a therapy session. He hasn't had a good one-on-one -on -one session in a while. You can imagine what's digging up in there. He even says one that hasn't ended in gratuitous bloodshed in very recent times. But then we get into this next panel where you have not just Deadpool's thought square, Deadpool's talking bubble, but again that third uh, box popping up with that different text kind of talking to him. It almost seems like he's talking from the white box then into his head with the yellow box and then out his mouth with what the doctor's hearing but one of my favorite things about deadpool comics is how funny they're meant to be you can see him talking about how he was born a coal miner's daughter my mother never breastfed me in fact none of the neighborhood moms gave me the time of day that is comedic gold and if you don't think so then you are not reading the right comics and the doctor gets to talking about deadpool's criteria he's good at killing people that's pretty obvious but he points out that Deadpool is near unkillable. Then you get Deadpool's mind talking to that white box again where Deadpool's like, I don't know about unkillable, but the other box is like, yeah, but some of your friends have probably tried. And he cuts Deadpool off, calling him an inefficient fighter, and he refers to himself as Dr. Brighton, which I believe is the alias he's using, but it's really Psycho Man. And we go in to see Deadpool talking with that thought bubble again, with the white bubble, about how you're an inattentive killer, but the white bubble's also saying you're selfish in bed. Come on, this is comedic gold. The doctor fiddles around with the tablet a bit and shocks Deadpool. We didn't see a collar on him or anything, but something's in him just blasting away at his nervous system. And Psycho Man inside the doctor is trying to lower Deadpool's resistances. Torturing him will make him more subordinate, but you can see Deadpool resisting with his yellow thought bubble. And that third thought bubble is panicking with the stop it, stop it, stop it. And as the doctor progresses, you see it react as a unit, as Deadpool, as a third party, referring to them as an us. You see it killing, he's killing you, he's killing us. He's trying to protect Deadpool and he has this extra layer of animidity of what's going on in this universe with the doctor still rambling still monologuing about his grand plan about how he's gonna condition all of them to be his soldiers but that's not gonna work out and psycho man mentions how he has a control box inside deadpool that's how he's able to torture him and try to control them but that white box is still panicking wanting him to get out of my head and then we get this big panel of what looks like glass breaking very similar to this multiverse breaking of glass that you saw in the what if show that's been out where each kind of reality has been portrayed by a shard of glass and that get out coming out of his mouth which was originally in that white bubble signifies that something just transitioned over the doctor thinks he succeed he's ended his experiment but then on this last pan we see this new box this red box with the white outline signifying yet another level of consciousness that is talking to deadpool Deadpool breaks out that straight jacket and the doctor starts panicking. He gets on top of him, he wraps it around. You see this lightning start to come out of his face. Really, it's signifying that he's not really a human. He's more of a robot. You see the back of his head pop open and boom, there's Psycho Man. Psycho Man first appears in the 1967 Fantastic Four annual as the leader of the technocracy that governs the microscopic systems of the worlds in the microverse. Due to the overpopulation on these worlds, the character decides that the microscopic world will be an ideal new base. Using technology 
technology from the mainstream Marvel Universe, Cycle Man remains the microscopic size, but is able to function by controlling the suits of advanced human-sized armor, which this doctor is an example of. Taking Psycho Man out of his pod, the red voice still talking to him. He needs to get that clean bill of health to get out of the hospital. So he takes Psycho Man, smashes him on the table on top of that bill, gets the job done. That's the signature right there. The voice still egging him on. Devil's like, who's this? And guy's like, you know who I am. But since you just killed this first guy, you need to finish the job. And you get a glimpse of some of these other captives with the Frenchmen being like, hey, Deadpool, you let me out, we go get a button. But Deadpool doesn't care. People trying to beg for him for a deal. That red voice telling him no. No deal. Deadpool's not having any of it. He's laying the gas on the ground. You see a couple dead guys. It looks like he's pouring the gas on someone's head randomly. And you get this kind of halo fire effect above his head from the chandelier. Kind of like a devil may cry, really. Showing that Deadpool's kind of on an evil path right now, if you could call it that. But he's about to light this place on fire. And then there's a big explosion blowing up the asylum. Deadpool's walk away because cool guys don't look at explosions. But he's still talking to that new voice being like, hey, where's all the other voices I used to talk to? And this random voice is like, hey, you don't need them. You got me now. You don't need to worry about them anymore. And I was hungry. Falling back to the commentary of the Watcher talking about how in some universes Psycho Man would have won and in some universes Psycho Man would have lost to the heroes. But in this reality, everything is making the perfect killer. And then BAM! Another Shia surprise. He's getting zapped by what? It's Deadpool. Remember that device he stole from Reed earlier? It was exactly this. He's telling how Reed built this device to see the watches, sense their presence, and be able to stun them like a little phaser stun gun for the celestial beings and Deadpool does not hesitate for a second to use it on him. And this last page is probably the most important in the whole book with that red text egging Deadpool on to ask the Watcher a question which is ultimately who is this Watcher talking to? We know the Watcher is talking to us. It shows him pointing at us. Deadpool's looking at us directly but he doesn't see us and he calls us a bunch of peeping toms because you know we're watching in on him that he doesn't know about but he's like you're gonna have to keep your eyes peeled you're gonna want to see what's next they're gonna want to watch this world burn this world implying the marvel universe and burning meaning deadpool's a fire that is gonna rain down on them ultimately killing the watcher in the end which is a big deal because the watcher just dying we don't even see that in what if it gets to a point in what if where the watcher is almost dead but he doesn't die so having the watcher die in these comics is a big deal and that concludes the first issue of deadpool kills marvel universe he got some big players out of the way the watcher fantastic for all major characters where do you go from here in the next issues we'll figure it out hit the subscribe button and notification so you know when those come up and thank you for watching